What's going on, everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Welcome, welcome. We are taking on a team today in the Orlando Orbits that have not one, but two subscriber players on the team. So far, I'm 1-0 against subscribers after beating uh, Jesse Buzo Jr. and the Dublin Shamrocks a couple episodes ago. And we are going to be down, or I should say over, to the right, to the east, in Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in London. And just a reminder, if you guys would like to have your creative player here in the SFL and you'd like to be a part of the SFL, all you have to do is comment down below and I will add you into the next episode. We are currently at 21 subscribers in the league, so loving the engagement. Love adding you guys and creating you guys and you know, putting you guys in the, the SFL here. So thank you so much. And if you don't know what's going on, go back and watch episode one and see what we got going on in the SFL here in this series. Now, today we're taking on two subscriber players, uh, halfback, first halfback so, and only, I believe, halfback subscriber to join the SFL, Johnny Waters. Shout out at Jonathan Waters 6091 in the comments. You see, we got Joe oh. Schmo here. No, Joe Schmo is not a subscriber player. You see, he's injured. Johnny, you got injured in practice, brother. I don't know what happened, but I was not about to let this episode go down without seeing you under, or I should say behind the quarterback, to the right, to the left of the quarterback, whatever. So I just uh, basically turned you into Joe Schmo and then re-added you as Johnny Waters. So unfortunately, your stats won't carry over from you know last game, but it's no worries. And I did also, for this game only, bump down Jonathan Taylor's ratings. So that way we will guarantee, no doubt, see you, you know, on most of the plays, majority of the sets here. I will move him back after this episode. But nonetheless, Johnny is here, 5'11", 240 pound halfback out of UCLA. A true power back in every sense of the word. Look at that 93 break tackle to go along with 90 speed as well and a just superb 95 strength i feel bad for our linebackers and our dbs trying to bring this guy down he probably will cause problems today hope you have a great game johnny but not too great of a game because your boy here still wants to come away with the dub newly added free safety flash parker will be looking to get his mitts on the pigskin today i am sure shout out at hb castro 3915 in the comments. Flash here is six foot one, 210 pounds, 81 overall star dev player out of Georgia State. And he is very fast, uber athletic, as a matter of fact. 95 speed to go along with 92 acceleration. And then he also has a very good man coverage and zone coverage skills as well. Not the best tackler, but potential ball hawk in the secondary. We've seen Jordan Love, our quarterback here on the Thunderbirds, throw a couple interceptions this season. Will that number jump up today because of Flash Parker? I don't know, but I would say there's a pretty good chance. Now, I don't often showcase my team on this franchise because this series is more about you guys, more about the subscribers, getting your creative players in here and being able to showcase you from week to week. And just a reminder, at 1,000 subscribers, I will do an NFL jersey giveaway. So please help me get there. If you love football content and Madden content, this is a good channel for you. And once I hit 1K subscribers, I will give away a NFL jersey to a subscriber on this channel. But our team, we're good. We're 3-1 and one on the season. We got Jordan Love as our QB of the future. Kyron Williams, who was the face of this team through four weeks, is now hurt, unfortunately. So Kareem Hunt is going to get a bulk of the carries. Our receivers are pretty good. We got Olave and Zay Jones as our one and our two. And then we got a fellow subscriber, Mike Oxmall. Mike Oxmall, if you didn't know. Logan Thomas, not sure why he's really in here. He shouldn't be. No, no, no. We're going to bring up... Oh, it's because Marquise Goodwin is injured. Okay, another injury. And also, I believe Valdez Scantling is injured too. I didn't even know that. So our receivers are down, definitely. Pretty solid offensive line, though. Trent Williams, one of the best left tackles in the business. Joe Tooney is good. Ryan Kelly is good. Van Roten and Donovan Smith are just okay. And then Darren Waller, good but aging tight end. He's been a pretty viable option for us, though. And then our defense is good but old. We got Jordan Poyer. We got Antoine Winfield. He's not too old, but Poyer is 
getting up there. And then aside from uh, DJ Reed, we got veteran, good, solid veteran, but old cornerbacks, Patrick Peterson, Marcus Peters, Jason Barrett, Jack Rabbit, Janoris Jenkins is over there as well. We got, again, besides Yaya Diaby, old linebackers, but good. Bobby Wagner, Zach Cunningham, JPP is here. Denzel Perryman, Michael Pierce, Brandon Graham is old, but then Miles Garrett is the face of our defense, but he hasn't really done too much so far this season. And then kicker and punter is absolutely the best ever, maybe in history. Justin Tucker and AJ Cole. Take a quick look at the Orlando Orbits, formerly the Jacksonville Jaguars over in the AFC South. And then we'll dive into gameplay and make sure you stick around because later on I will be updating all the subscribers on how their team is doing record wise and stat wise at the end or towards the end of this episode. So they got Kyler Murray. They got uh, Tommy Cutlets is here as well. No picture though. So Kyler is going to be their quarter quarterback. And then Johnny Waters, of course, already talked about him and Jonathan Taylor. So a very formidable running back room. Henry Pearson, rookie out of App State is the fullback. They got Mari Cooper and Kadarius Tony to go along with an injured Isaiah McKinney and a KJ Osborne. Amari going to have to definitely keep eyes on him at all times. Taysom Hill is here as a tight end. Bet you the Orbits aren't going to utilize him correctly. I would have to wager. But Dawson Knox, pretty good. Uh, former Bill, actually. We, the Thunderbirds, used to be the Bills. Offensive line, they got Colton Miller, pretty good. Left tackle, David Edwards, eh, decent guard. Pat Elfline, Ohio State Buckeye, but not a very good center. Alex Kappa, probably their best offensive lineman or it would be jack conklin but he is also hurt so both teams dealing with the injury bug here a little bit another ohio state buckeye draymond jones is the left end aj epineza is the right end nothing too special too crazy there puna ford and levi anzarike their defensive line shouldn't get a lot of pressure on us and jalen phillips he's a good player but he's hurt so boogie basham gonna be filling in for him Ernest Jones and Elandon Roberts and a former Mr. Irrelevant, Tay Crowder, also here at the Mike linebacker positions. Kayvon Thibodeau, good edge rusher, about to be paired up with Brian Burns in real life on the Giants and uh, Dexter Lawrence. That's going to be a nightmare offensive line in a MetLife Stadium. Sauce Gardner, Michael Carter, Isaiah Oliver, Sauce Gardner could be a problem, but the rest of the CBs I don't see being too crazy. But Flash Parker here, will he be a flash on the field? Will he make an impact in today's game? He has a good running mate in Derwin James as well. So maybe the secondary is not as uh, as much of a pushover as I thought. Quinn Norton, the kicker. There's hella, hella good kickers in free agency. Don't know why these teams aren't picking them up. And then Daniel Whelan, rookie punter as well. That is your Orlando Orbits in the AFC South. Three and one Toronto Thunderbirds, formerly the Buffalo Bills. Two and two Orlando Orbits, formerly the Jacksonville Jaguars. Taking on two subscribers today, and we are doing it in London at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. So if you guys are loving the SFL so far and you're fired up for some more content and you want to be in this league, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. And without further ado, let's get on over to London and get ready for the game. Fireworks are a booming here in London, and don't think I've ever played a London game in Madden. Not 100% sure. It doesn't really matter. Still looks like Thunderbird Stadium to me with the end zones and we are going to be punting the ball to the Orlando Orbits first and the big question is what type of impact will halfback Johnny Waters play and what type of impact will free safety Flash Parker play hopefully not a lot but there are two really good players so we will have to check and see Tyler Murray not doing anything too special this season five touchdowns to three picks just a little over 500 yards on the season and i was checking pre-game our quarterback jordan love he leads the league in passing yards up until this point how about that isn't that special there's number 25 johnny waters he's gonna not yes he is gonna get the first handoff and already breaking tackles and being shifty there shoving men aside picking up a gain of six but the former buckeye pat elfline gonna go down to the turf and if that's any indication of what Waters will look like on the ground, although we see uh, Jonathan Taylor in for this set, but if that's any indication of what Waters is going to look like on the ground, I am shaking in my freaking space boots here. No pun intended with the orbits. That's going to bring up a third inches. And yeah, we, uh, we got hit with injuries. No doubt about it. Especially Kyron Williams. If you guys have been watching the SFL series here, you will know 
He's pretty much been our offense. He's been the face of this team. Jonathan Taylor should have brought in Waters. Should have brought in Waters. Waters may have been able to stop it, but Yaya Diaby is going to get Jonathan Taylor in the backfield for a big loss of four. And what a way for our defense to kick things off. I did put Johnny Waters in pretty much every set, but I think that Jonathan Taylor is still the power back on the depth chart. So maybe that is why we, uh, God, Patrick Peterson stood no chance there. <laughs> but maybe that is why we saw him in a couple of those sets. Not sure, but we'll have to check it out. And here is Jordan Love leading the league. Almost 1,200 yards through the air. Seven touchdowns and three picks. Started off the season a little rocky, I would say. But he has certainly turned up the Jets. The question is, with no Kyron Williams, what will Kareem Hunt do? He played pretty good last week, I feel like. But it is anybody's guess today. Let's start out. Drags. And we are going to be sacked instantly by Elandon Roberts for a loss of seven. I saw Mike Oxmall shout out at Rams fan in the comments. Saw him getting open there momentarily. But we were never able to get it to him. RPO action, but this actually could be Oxmall, which I think it is. And I need a good block from uh, not even sure who that was. It definitely was. I think that's Chris Olave up there, number 12. A good block could have sprang Oxmall for a big gain. Instead, it's just going to bring up a third and 11, third and long on our inaugural drive of the game. So what can Jordan Love and the boys get done here? That is the question. What did I say pregame? That this uh, offensive line didn't look to be too good? Their defensive line shouldn't get a lot of pressure on us. I always see Waters back in the game to Kyler Murray's right. Kyler is motioning a man, and it is going to be Waters on the carry. Tell you what, for being a power back, this guy's got some pretty, pretty good jukes, I would say. I'm, I'm seeing him changing directions pretty nice down there on the field. We're gonna come out dime blitz. Now Jonathan uh, Taylor is back in the game and gotta watch number 88 there. So maybe I'll have Miles Garrett drop back in coverage. Kyler's first pass was under heavy duress as Leonard Floyd was in there to make him uncomfortable. Come out dime again, another third down. So, so far neither one of these teams can really move the ball too effectively. And that was Miles Garrett. Gotta watch uh, Pat Pete there uh, almost got P.I. possibly, but Miles Garrett was in the backfield to cause the pressure. We really need him to because I feel like the first game, first game or two, he had a couple sacks, but we really haven't called his name too much since then, and he should be a game wrecker here. We cannot let all these old defensive linemen and old linebackers show the reigning defensive player of the year in real life how to get to the quarterback. Let's put the ball in the hands of Kareem Hunt, see what he can get done. Big hole there on the outside, okay. Very nice block set there by Joe Tooney. Kareem Hunt's able to pick up seven. We see what he was able to do last week when Kyron Williams went down. I mean, he he played good. He definitely played good. I'm a big Kareem Hunt fan. I really hope that uh, the Browns retain him as Nick Chubb's backup long-term. Don't know if they are gonna, but I definitely like his game and he almost got it there, but stopped mere shades of the line to game. Sneak Kyle Yuves check to lead the way for me, and Hunt should be able to pick this up, which he does with ease. Nice juke there, too, faking out Derwin James. And now the Thunderbirds are moving on our second drive here. Love to see it. Jay Love and the boys got the ball almost to midfield at the 42. Let's come out a little play fake here and see if we can maybe get some protection. Olave way to hang on to that pass. Oh, man, that was fit into a very tight window. And that's good to see from Olave because he's been mighty quiet to start this season. I think that was actually Flash Parker on the coverage. Let's see, number 29 it was. So that was blanket coverage. Can't blame Flash for that one. That was just a heck of a grab by Olave and even better, a heck of a throw from Jordan Love. And now we are three yards away from being in the red zone. So we'll come out. Single back here, and I think our tight end Waller is open. What a beautiful pass from Love. The pressure was getting very close, and Darren Waller going to go ahead and get injured for his efforts. That was a very, very great. I was almost about to say a fine ball from Love, but that was going to be a little sus there. Hunt again on the inside zone seems like a good idea, and there we go. Wide open hole 
in the middle of the field. So Thunderbirds are going to draw first blood here. And so far, Orbits really ain't doing too much. But Darren Waller, that's a huge, huge loss for us. So that is going to thrust Logan Thomas, the veteran, into a little bit more of a role here. Also, Ricky Seals-Jones might be able to see him. We haven't really seen him too much this season. He's our third string tight end. But nonetheless, it was still a good drive from the T-Birds. Now let's see if Johnny Waters and his troops, Kyler Murray and the boys, Amari Cooper, see if they can respond and put some points on the board of their own. Kyler in the full house. So got a fullback, a tight end, and halfback Johnny Waters back there. It is going to be Waters on the carry, and this could spell trouble. This could spell trouble. No, 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 no. Somebody bring him down. Oh, my God. All right. Enter Johnny Waters, the power back. That is uh, what we didn't want to see happen. And he got a good block, shook a little weak leg tackle there, and he did the rest all by himself. So this is easily the Orbit's best drive of the game. But let's see if we can shut it down right now. Jonathan Taylor now back into the game as well. And that's just going to be a nice completion to Amari Cooper. Marcus Peters and company are there to wrestle him down. For Kyler Murray's second completion. And that will be the end of the first. I wouldn't say dominated by the T-Birds. Definitely dominated the time of possession. But the Orbits are moving. They're cruising. They're getting very close to scoring range. Or they're in scoring range. But very close to punching it in. And we just got to make sure that we don't allow them to pick up this one yard. Kyler came out shotgun. But I'm not convinced it's not still going to be a run to Taylor. Which it's not. But... It's a touchdown to K.J. Osborne. The nice answer by the Orbits there. They really didn't do much on their first drive. And they needed a good bounce back drive. But that was all started by the big 40 plus yard run from Johnny Waters. Reading the defense here. I see Olave is getting pressed. I thought about streaking him. But I don't think I'm going to do that. How about just Logan Thomas? Nope. There's a nice bat down there by Flash Parker. He was... He kind of came up looking like he almost like he was going to blitz on that one. So no gain on the play, obviously. Second and 10 now. And got to watch Flash and Derwin James back there as well. How about just... It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. It's Mike Oxball, that's a pick. No? Okay, Derwin. I feel like Flash would have definitely picked that off. So you better step your game up, brother. Facing a little adversity here. Third and long. We're going to go PA crosser, so I need... Kareem Hunt to set a good block for me. Someone's... Mm, okay. I had a couple options open downfield, but I was eyeing the pocket, and I was eyeing the uh, pass rush there, so that one was on me. I probably could have got it out to Oxma or possibly Chris Olave, but I was I was talking about the defensive line not looking too good pregame, and they must have heard me because not only do they have a couple sacks on Love now, but they've also been forcing pressure pretty much all game here's waters again and the blocking is superb and waters is finding it five rushes for 63 yards and he is carving us up like a friggin thanksgiving turkey so far in this half See if kyler goes back to him he's not gonna and that was a dangerous pass he threw it into like three different t-birds there none of them decided to put their hands up i mean why would they it's just a potential game changing interception no need to feel urgent about it just sit there and you know look at the field and do what you do johnny i gotta say brother thank you for being subscribed to this channel not liking you in this game i gotta be honest yeah i feel that we are definitely gonna have to shift our focus at halftime to something to do with the run maybe it doesn't matter because kyler murray now has two touchdown passes so we uh went from Looking like the Orbits couldn't do anything to now they have a touchdown lead. We can't seem to move the ball other than that one drive. So we're going to have to figure it out and we're going to have to figure it out pretty soon. I'm going to need Kareem Hunt to block because this pass rush is amazing? Question mark? I don't know. Coming out mesh spot from the shotgun. Let's see if somebody can get open. We have, there's Mike Oxmall. Nice little five-yard catch on the drag. I will certainly take it. See if Oxmall gets it again on the RPO. He just might. And that time, Olave has a nice block. Oxmall, if he just had about three or four more speed, could have been off to the races. But still good to see a subscriber on our team get the ball. 
We only have one subscriber that's on the Thunderbirds, guys. So if you want to join the T-Birds, hey, let me know, and I will certainly add you. It's never too late. I can add you any week in the SFL, really. Does not matter to me. Let's see if Hunt can get something going on the outside. Tried to juke the defender there, uh, Ernest Jones, the linebacker. Didn't work too well, only for a gain of one. I mean, do I audible this again to Hunt? I really, you know, it's only a couple down linemen there. Feeling kind of good about this one. Zay Jones, nice block. And I'll tell you what, man, Kareem Hunt, he is looking exactly like the same player as Kyron Williams, doing the same exact stuff that he was doing prior to uh, to getting injured. And I'm liking his production now. We just have to capitalize here and find the end zone. I really wish Olave was getting pressed on the left side there. He is not, so we're just going to do the safe thing. And Ricky Seals-Jones, a wild Ricky Seals-Jones sighting. Wow. Don't see that too often, but he was get, he got open on the drag. Big number 48 there, and he did the rest all by himself, getting this ball down to the six-yard line. And from here on out, let's just trust that Kareem Hunt can get the job done. I see him putting two hands on that ball, which I really, really love. Don't want to see a fumble in this territory here. Kareem, show me that it's your dream, and it is. Very good, very good. Okay, so back to comfortable territory here. Kareem Hunt punches it in for the second time on the afternoon. I assume it's the afternoon in London. I mean, we normally play in Toronto. I don't know what the time zone is in London. Look, I see some dark clouds starting to, or some shadows on the on the field here. I don't know. What I'm saying is, second touchdown of the freaking day, okay? See, I don't really know what route to go. Man doesn't seem to be working. Zone doesn't seem to be working that well. Really, nothing seems to be working. We haven't gotten any pressure on Kyler. And, oh, nice catch there by Cooper, who I tell you what, I'll tell you what. On the Browns in real life, um, cause I'm, you know, I'm a Packers fan, yes, but I live here in Ohio, so I am a Browns fan by default. But they just signed Jerry Judy, they got Amari Cooper, they got Elijah Moore, who didn't do much. It's gonna be a screen pass, read it beautifully. Oh, nice! Oh my God, deadly cutback by Taylor. But I, it's all up to Deshaun Watson now. He has the weapons at his disposal. David Njoku, premier up-and-coming tight end, although. Joe Flacco kind of made him that way, but still. Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, potentially. Uh, there's no excuses in Cleveland, and there's no excuses for Johnny Waters not to get that first down. But our defense held stout, and we are going to have a chance to double dip. Getting the ball back, we're also going to get the ball back, I think. I think that the Orbits got the ball first, I believe. Chance to double dip. We really need this because the Orbits have been playing good. More Kareem Hunt? Yes. I mean, I don't see, uh, he hasn't given me a reason to go away from him. Coach is suggesting draw play as well. And for those of you who never watched me before, I do typically tend to go with coach suggestions unless Madden just causes one of their, or calls one of their boneheaded plays, which we know they're good for from time to time. But I would say like, I don't know, 85%. Something like that, 86.5% of the time. I uh, typically go with coach suggestions. Not liking any of these coach suggestions here. I guess verticals, but this could be another audible to Kareem Hunt, honestly. Inside zone, feel like if we get a good block or two, he should be able to pick it up. And that time, he is stuck. Feel like the orbits would be suspecting a pass here, so this seems like a good time for PA rollout, but I need Logan Thomas to block, and whoever the first open receiver that I see is, it is actually going to be Seals Jones. They say fourth in inches. Huh. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that, I don't agree with it. See, this is a time right here, this is where I will, will call my own play. I mean, QB sneak seems like a good idea, but I feel like they kind of nerfed that. In Madden 23, it was like lockdown automatic, I feel like. Not so much these days, but Kareem just need a good block, and he will get it by a short and a curly. We're going to go ahead and call timeout. And I mean, in this situation, coach is saying screen. We still got two timeouts. You know, if we have to settle for a field goal, I would rather do that than turn the ball over. So I think the, the safe... Safe screen pass to Hunt 
is a good call, although that one was uh, pretty boo-boo there. Kind of like Oxmaw on a drag here. I don't like that Zay Jones is matched up with Sauce Gardner. That much is for sure. And there's Oxmaw. I mean, do we have time to spike it? We do. We have one timeout, 17 seconds. Maybe an end zone shot, and then potentially, if we don't get it, entertain the idea of going for a field goal. Although, you wouldn't think that the coach wants me to do an end zone shot based on their calls. That much is for sure. But I like potentially Oxmall on this corner route. I do need a hunt to block for me. Sauce Gardner is up there as well, which is never a good thing. And I'll tell you what, man, that pressure, that pressure, it's something fierce today. Olave gets open on the seam there. Depending on what that safety does, I might go for him, although I don't mm -hmm. like it. But, oh, I had Zay Jones open, but it was an inaccurate ball from Love. And you know what? That's fine. We'll settle with the field goal from Tucker. Again, we do get the ball back after halftime. So going into the locker room up on the scoreboard, never a bad thing at all. And we'll just have to uh, see how the second half shakes out. It's been pretty evenly matched so far 17 14 good game here good game look at the rushing yards by the orbits that is johnny waters doing all the damage there but our rushing yards are pretty respectable as well and had we not thrown an errant pass with love on that last drive we could be going into the locker room up by even more and i am gonna go run ah, da, 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 da. i'm gonna go run inside the focus because this has kind of been the kareem hunt show and of course we're going to go defend the inside run on Johnny Waters as well. Will Kareem Hunt be the big focus here of the second half? I think yes is probably the answer. I think that's definitely the right way to go. Let's come out I form here. Another little potential run pass option. We'll see if and Sauce Gardner is glowing. Never like to see Sauce Gardner. Never like to see anybody glowing, but especially not Sauce Gardner. And they are letting me have these checkdowns on the RPOs. Zay Jones, his first grab of the game, and it goes for a first down. Let's see if they're cluing in. We're going to go run pass option again. This time got Mike. They're not. They're not clue. Oh, maybe they are. Okay. Dangerous pass there. If uh, the defender would have just put his hands up, Draymond Jones, making Ohio State look bad on that one because if you would have put your hands up, brother, you may have had yourself an easy pick. But nonetheless, still a good positive play. Second and four here. Ball is on the 38. We're going to come out shotgun and just going to check it down to Ricky Steels Jones. But he is a tight end number three for a reason. He was not able to haul that pass in, unfortunately. And a big third and four. Don't want to come out of the locker room stale here. So hopefully somebody can just get open. And I kind of just think it's Kareem Hunt underneath. Why not? Kareem doing it on the ground. Kareem doing it through the air. Kareem living the freaking dream. Try PA rollout again here. It didn't work too well earlier, but maybe Olave, and that is going to be picked. Unfortunately, it's not Flash Parker. It's Michael Carter the second. And I should have just done the safe, smart thing and checked it down to Kyle Juszczyk because I believe he was open, or not Kyle Juszczyk, Ricky Steels Jones. Yeah, he was open in the flat. I pretty much just had tunnel vision on Olave. I tried to pass lead it correctly, but not a wise decision. I will take the onus of that one all day, every day. See if Johnny Waters is the focal point of the Orbit's offense here. It's like he is going to get the ball. My man's got some vicious cuts. For being a power back, I will say he's got some vicious cuts. Dime blitz here, but I need eyes on Waters because, yep, just like I said, Bobby Wagner, thank God he got in there. But Johnny, congratulations, you do go over the century mark and you are playing a big, big factor in your team's success today. And with that interception that I just threw, Orbits have a chance to reclaim the lead in this one. They haven't had it for quite, well, I guess it was tied there for a while. Dangerous pass by Kyler, but Kadarius Tony was able to hang on to it. Chiefs fans haven't been able to say that too much as of late. We're going to show Blitz here. Murray's got a tight formation, and I thought it was going to be a false start there momentarily. And now Bobby Wagner finally, finally making his presence felt. Buckling up the seatbelt, saying, time to lock in, boys. That was one of the few times that we have seen Waters uh, stopped in the backfield. And you know what? I'm going to press up on these corners. 
And if it's a run to Waters, it's a run to Waters. We're going to have guys in a bit better position to stop him. Another dangerous pass from Kyler. But KJ Osborne does hang on. It's got to be Dime Blitz. We're guessing pass. We're shading inside. Got Jonathan Taylor in the game now. And where is Kyler going to go? He is going to go over to the cameraman. So it's looking like uh, Quinn Norton. Nothing's a guarantee for him. The three-year pro out of Michigan. We'll see if he is able to drill this thing through. Maybe Jason Barrett can get a nice little block kick animation. Not going to happen. Norton is going to tie the game up 17 all. I'm going to give Oxmall a chance to go streaking. Yeah, that's that's funny. Mike Oxmall going streaking. Uh, I don't like it, though, but I like Zay Jones, and that was nearly picked off by Sauce. And was P.A. Crosser the wrong thing to call? We're going to need some protection. Don't know if Kareem Hunt can do it all by his lonesome, but Mike is there. Oxmall. Sauce is a problem. Let's be honest. Sauce is a problem. I figured that he would be. He does not have a pick in this one, but we've called his name on about three or four plays. Mike was open on that one. Maybe I could have led it a different way, I suppose. Maybe a fumble here. Not going to happen. And our defense needs to step it up here. Got to have eyes on Johnny. Not going to be a run to Johnny. It's just going to be, come on, Miles. Miles, how, did, how was that not a sack? Garrett was in perfect position to bring Murray down, and he just, like, like derped out. I mean, I don't know. I mean, right there. Like, okay, I guess his momentum would be carrying him to the left, I suppose. But Garrett is famous for reaching out, getting hands on the quarterback. I mean, all you got to do is reach that big right club out there, slow Kyler down a little bit, and we could have had him in the backfield. Nickel Blitz here, uh, Jonathan Taylor back into the game. We got Yaya Diaby dropping back in coverage, which is always a scary thing. And thank God Cooper dropped that. That may have been a house call. Guess pass. Shade inside here. We'll see what Murray does. Ball is on the 30. So they are threatening Murray with a little RPO of his own. They've been watching us do that all game long. So I guess Murray thought that it would be a good idea to get in on some of that action himself. And I'll tell you what, man. Right now, we're just going to press up. We're going to guess pass. We're going to shade inside. I need Leonard Floyd to kind of spy the middle of the field here because it is Kyler and not going to matter. Don't know why Amari Cooper decided to Star Fox barrel roll it on that one. Do a barrel roll. At this point, we got to go blitz here. Murray's coming out empty. Always got to have somebody manned up in the middle. Thank you. Finally, about freaking time. Safety blitz. Antoine Winfield Jr. It's our first sack of the game and... We had a couple of them puppies in the prior games. Going to need a couple of them puppies today as well. So Murray again empty in the shotgun. I need to watch Amari Cooper now. He's been the main problem guy. Pick, pick. There we go. It's Marcus Peters. I was going to try to down it, but they never down it anyways. So what's it matter? Marcus Peters has made some noise this season. He's got two or three picks leaning towards the ladder. I think maybe three but definitely two. And he has made some noise in this franchise so far on our team and might have just put us back in this game. Mike Oxmall. Nice pickup of six. And we're going to go into the fourth quarter locked in at 17. Both teams' defenses, besides Miles Garrett, I'm not giving him any credit on that play, that quarter, whatever. But both teams' defenses are now starting to step up and come alive. And I feel like whatever team doesn't make the big mistake here in this fourth quarter may just come away as the victor. The nice block from Joe Tooney. Somehow, Kareem Hunt was able to still push the pile forward. Coach is saying screen again, and I like it. Uh, the deep routes haven't really been there so far today from Love. It's been the little checkdowns and the RPOs and uh, Kareem Hunt doing a majority of the work. This one should be easy money for Kareem. It is, and just going to jet out of bounds again. My plan here is to ride Kareem Hunt all the way to the victory. I mean, we did make uh, running it inside our focus, and now Logan Ta Okay. Okay. So now we're down two tight ends. We got Ricky Seals-Jones, and that's it. Bunch of offensive linemen, and it's not the right time for that to happen. I'll be honest with you, because do I audible this to Hunt again? No. 
I'm going to say true this time. True to what I called. Eh, I'll just give it to Steels Jones. And he didn't catch it anyways. Thanks, Ricky. Okay, well, Logan Thomas is back in at least. So that is a good sign. We got to pick this up. And we got to pick this up now. There's Thomas. Just going to go down. Going to do a barrel roll of our own. And that one was clutch. Thank you for not being hurt too bad, Logan Thomas. I uh, greatly, greatly appreciate that. Big third down here. If we don't get this, I feel like orbits have momentum. If we do get this, I feel like we have momentum. We're going to go draw play to Kareem. No reason to go away from it, although we got no blockers. And now... Enter Melvin Gordon. Probably. Nine-year pro out of Wisconsin. That trainer is getting a pretty in-depth look at Kareem Hunt there. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Oh, shit! I mean, okay. We'll kick the field goal, hopefully go up on the scoreboard. Not the worst thing in the world, but a touchdown would have been so much sweeter. Thank the stars. Kareem Hunt's back, but his injury risk is high. May have to look at the injury sliders. I think I have him at like 46 right now or something like that. And is this Johnny Waters time? That's the question. Wow. Thought that was about to be Patrick Peterson time. KJ Osborne made a good adjustment to come back to the ball. Tyler empty again. So Bobby Wagner is going to kind of have him patrol. Oh, it's a design QB run. Come on. Somebody get him. Come on, man. Kyler. Oh, my. Oh, my God. It was a designed QB run from the start. And I don't know how. I felt like we definitely... I mean, the second he snapped it, he started running to the right. Garrett couldn't get off his block. He cuts it back inside. Bobby Wagner, I was controlling him, but you see, he got like bumped there, so it slowed down. I was trying to move back to the left. Wagner's right, that is. But what a dagger from Kyler. It's about the last thing that we could have had happen. And Kyler's going empty again. So will it be another... Designed QB run, looking like it's going to be a sack. Thank you. That Pete is right there to get Murray. I really do feel like our defense has been stepping up pretty good in this one. Got to give them credit. So as the orbits, but if, oh, Bruh. that was a bad defensive play there from Peterson, I believe. And we are going to get cooked there by Dawson Knox, the tight end. First time we called his name in this game. Guess silver lining if the Orbits do score a touchdown here. We do still got a lot of time. That time I was controlling Bobby Wagner. Had a feeling it was going to be Johnny Waters on the delayed give, and it was. So luckily we followed him beautifully. We are going to press up on the line again. And Leonard Floyd, I'm going to have him. See, I always, when you're playing quarterbacks, like, look, it's a design run again. Design run again. Okay. Got a little scared there for a second. But you always got to have a defensive end or a linebacker or somebody kind of patrolling the field there. Even here on third and nine, probably the same thing. We're going to press up with our corners again. Leonard Floyd, you're going to have him spy the middle of the field. And it's a completion. But he led KJ Osborne way too far to the left. And only a field goal is going to result. So bend but don't break from our defense. I like to see it. And now we have a chance to, if we play our cards right, bleed this clock out. Did he miss that? Did he? He did. Oh, my God. Quinn Norton. Wow. Can I see a replay of that? How close was that sucker? It was r wide right. Can't even get my uh, camera there. There we go. It was wide right. Didn't even have the distance either. Wow. That's why you pick up one of those good kickers in free agency, man. There's about six of them. I saw them. I saw them. I saint it. I saint them. We play our cards right on this drive. Orbits never have to get the ball back. Final play here before the two-minute warning. You know it's going to be draw to Kareem. Why would it not? If he keeps picking up four like that, this will be ball game. 2017. Two-minute warning. It's second down. Orbits do have all their timeouts, which uh not super happy about that because he, we're going to force them to use their timeouts, obviously. But even if we kick a field goal, which, not a gimme, even having Justin Tucker back there. But look at Kareem. Look at Kareem finding the seam, living the dream. His game is clean. And my bars are clean, too. 
That might have done it right there, guys. That may have done it. Orbits are going to have to burn all of their timeouts. Barring some... Uh, Kareem, I mean... I respect it, brother, but maybe you should just go down. 2017 will be your final score. Not going to rub any salt on the wound with Jay Tuck. Got to respect these orbits. We got a couple subscribers on the team, so not going to do anything dirty. Doug Peterson cannot believe it. And I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. That was a low-scoring game, but a fun game indeed. It was a nail-biter, and really it was the defense. I mean, there's a couple good storylines here. So Jordan Love... I mean, he didn't play great at all. No touchdowns, that pick. Kyler had two touchdowns, but only 131 yards. Like, that's not going to get it done. But the running backs shined in this one. Johnny Waters averaged 8.5 yards per carry, 102 yards on the ground. But look at Kareem Hunt, the workhorse. 30 carries, a buck 41, and found the end zone twice. Hunt was also a factor in the receiving game. Also, Mike Oxmall, too. Six catches for 44 yards. Amari Cooper played great. And Olave continues to only have, like, one catch per game, but it always seems to be a pretty good one. Now, Flash Parker, no, no uh, picks, no interceptions, but a respectable 10 tackles. Feel like he had an opportunity to really grab a pick on that one, that one solo catch to Olave, but it didn't happen. But I'll tell you what, guys, the Toronto Thunderbirds going to improve to 3-1 on the season. Let's check and see how our subscribers performed here in Week 5. Shamrocks take the L again. So quarterback Jesse Buzo, his team not off to, I believe they haven't won a game yet. Buzo, he had two touchdowns, a pick, 218 yards. We'll see uh, what his receivers did for him. Brandon Powell was his big target. Debo Samuel also played pretty good as well. And Mason Rudolph and Desmond Ritter were the victors in that one. Okay. Ooh, Virginia Beach Blues and Yeezy Fuentes' team. They take their first loss of the season. John A or Josh Allen did not play great. What's up with these quarterbacks with uh, low passing yards, man? But I'll tell you what, leading receiver of the game was none other than Yeezy Fuentes, subscriber on this channel. So even though your team lost Yeezy, at least you were a big contributor on the field. Our division rival, Brooklyn Nighthawks, dropped to the OKC Antlers. Checking on the stats of our QB subscriber here, Derek Daragosa. I mean, he was slinging the ball downfield in almost 300 yards, three touchdowns, but it looks like it was those two picks that ended up doing him in. And he got Jamar Chase involved a lot, Adam Thielen, Michael Thomas, so... The dispersion was there with the receivers, but unfortunately, the W was not. Ooh, double subscriber team. The Honolulu Dragons pull it off against the Canton Condors. Condors, we have a subscriber receiver, so that would be Mr. Braden Keys. Let's see what he was able to do. Three catches for 42. Not too bad. Nothing that's going to blow you away. But then we have our safety duo here. Let's filter over to the Condors. We have two safeties on the squad. Mike Collins, who had a pick. Mike Collins, rookie out of Rutgers, modeled after the Packers legend Nick Collins, had a pick and five tackles. And then Eli Sokowitz had three tackles and a pass deflection. So the Condors were playing some good defense. Unfortunately, it was not enough to get it done. And then our punter, Jack Mavros, his team got the victory, had to punt the ball four times, Average net of 45.5. Um, none in the 20. But that's all right because your team got the victory. St. Louis Sentinels get the loss here. So subscribers taking some L's here today. We'll check on QB Rocky DiBernardo who played amazing. Cannot fault him for this loss at all. 357 through the air. Two picks or two touchdowns. I'm sorry, Rocky. I'm sorry. Two touchdowns. But Lawrence had that one extra touchdown. That's what proved to be the difference, and Jerry Judy was getting it done for Lawrence. Jamison Crowder was uh, the Sentinels' big target, and Devontae Adams and McCole Hardman and Sterling Shepard had a big reception of 70 yards. Another subscriber head-to-head -head matchup. The Armadillos beat out our division rival Lumberjacks and quarterback Michael Yakin, 209 yards and a pick. Geno Smith played very good. We got two receivers out here as well so we'll check on our subscriber receivers 
James Briner went three for 30. Uh, no touchdowns. That's okay. And Bjorn Jeffrey, two for 17. So the tight ends, I mean, they're not going to show up on the stat sheet too much, but sure they had a big impact. And then we got to check on our linebacker here, Arturo Estevel, Esquivel. Five tackles, and that's it. But I believe the Armadillos have only lost one game as well. And then one last subscriber matchup here. Oakland Wizards getting the dub over the Paris Black Knights. So we'll check on our brother duo, Jaden Hayes and Caleb Hayes. So Jaden, the QB, 220, a touchdown and a pick. Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Wizards. That's right. We played them already. And let's see if he targeted his brother, Caleb Hayes. His brother had a touchdown. There you go. So a brother to brother, subscriber to subscriber connection. Caleb went two for 33. And then on the defensive side, we have a linebacker on this team. We will see what he was able to do. Michael Briner, brother of James Briner, had one tackle. So didn't really get, you know, too much stats on the field there. But nonetheless, his team got the dub. That's how everyone Paired here in week five. All right, guys, that is going to be a wrap for this episode. Think we'll kick off next episode here, week six, with the standings, subscriber standings, and see where all the teams stack up amongst the league. But thank you guys so much for the engagement on this series. That is going to do it for me tonight. But as always, I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.